You're listening to a special edition Zweig Letter podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting guru Mark Zweig and his team of experts, Straight Talk, in your ear. Mark has more than 30 years of experience helping AEP and environmental firms thrive, and these podcasts deliver his invaluable management, industry, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter and the Zweig Letter podcasts let you develop professionally wherever you are. Hey folks, it's Randy Wilburn here with the Zweig Letter podcast back for another episode. I am so glad that I finally convinced Richard Massey, the editor of the Zweig Letter, to come on our podcast. This act, this podcast was actually created for the benefit of him and for the Zweig Letter itself. But I'm just I'm just certainly honored to to have you finally on the show. Uh, everybody wants to hear from you. There's so much to be said, so much to talk about, and um, we've got a, a kind of a jam packed show today. It's more of a free for all that we're going to have today with Mr. Massey, so you can hear his heart about writing and about the Zweig letter in general and in the design industry and um, how he's trying to uh, take this little corner of the world and, and make his own impact with his with his writing. So Richard, without further ado, I just want to welcome you to the Zweig letter podcast. It's been too long, but you're finally here. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks, Randy. It's good to be here. And um, I appreciate you uh getting this opportunity together for us i'd love to talk to our listeners out there and tell them about uh, what i do and how we get it done okay well that's good so you know i know richard you and i we, we go back and forth a lot especially when it's it's deadline time and my article is due I, I write a couple of articles a month or maybe one a month i don't know i lose track but i, I mean you write an article every week um, and you have you. I mean, you you came out. I mean, just tell it. Tell the audience a little bit about who Richard Massey is. I, I learned more about you last week when we had our lunch and learn. Oh yeah, the a, lunch and learn. Yeah, which was a lot of fun. But but I mean, tell tell the audience just a little bit, just a little teaser about your background and and uh, sure. let them know what you, who you are. Yeah, well, uh, uh, my background is in journalism. Uh, I have a, a degree in journalism and. Uh, for about 15 years, I worked for uh, daily newspapers, a business journal, and really, uh, I've always been a small to mid-market. I've never been in a, in a big market, but a lot of the dirty work in journalism is done at the local level, actually, yeah. and um, and that's where most journalism people uh, put food on their plates, okay. and so um, without going into too much detail, I've pretty much covered everything but a foreign war. I mean, I've been <laughs> from local courts all the way up to state Supreme Court, state legislature. I've done a couple of federal things uh, and a ton of stuff, um, city council, you know, local courthouse, school districts, uh, the cops, and, um, you know, and did business reporting uh, for two and a half years. Um, and now, you know, uh, architecture and engineering. So, Outside of a foreign war, uh, I've pretty much done it all. Yeah, and and you're an author. And uh, yes, uh, in the last couple of years, <laughs> I've become that. a published author. I'm out. I'm with a small publishing house, but uh, published nonetheless, and um, that feels pretty good. Awesome, that's awesome. Well, I mean, certainly, I know we, we're we're glad to have you. I think you you cert you. Um, just celebrated your one year anniversary just a, a couple of months ago back in, uh, in yes January. I sure did yeah so that's exciting I can't believe uh, a year or more has gone by so that's that's really exciting so so tell me a little bit about um, <clears throat> you know your your mindset behind the Zweig letter and what you're trying to get across I mean we know that you know Mark Zweig writes the 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 the, the masthead piece if you will right uh, each each week. And, uh, you know, Mark is such a fabulous writer. I just love reading his articles. And I, I have to say, if we didn't have somebody like him coming out of the gates, it would be a lot harder to get this to get this newsletter across to people because, you know, everybody it, we're fighting for attention on a daily sure. basis. And it's really difficult for people. But so t t tell me your thought process behind what you're trying to accomplish with this wide letter. Sure. Uh, you know, what we want to do is. Uh, is just have this uh, kind of like a, 
a weekly uh, conference call with the with our readership um, because you know we come out once a week. We'll have anywhere from five to six articles a week, uh, which, if you do the math, is anywhere from what twenty to twenty four, about twenty uh, uh, a month, and so. In that time frame, if you look at it on a month-long time frame, uh, we can address a lot of issues. Yeah, and so, uh, and I don't expect our readers to read every word of every article. What I really expect them to do is to find neat little uh, golden nuggets within the publication that come out over and over and over again uh, to either reconfirm something that they already know. Yeah. Uh, you know, that reinforcement that we all need that you're doing the right thing or that you're going in the right direction or to even uh, spark in someone a brand new idea that they've never had before. So um, that's the ultimate goal of the swag letters just to be like that extra C-suite executive on staff uh, that helps people uh, make good decisions and to, you know, keep on top of what people are thinking and doing in that industry. And, um, I know that we succeed in that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know I'm always looking forward to reading like some of the spotlight articles and, um, there've been a couple of features you did a a couple of months ago, you did a story about that building in, in San Francisco. Oh yeah. The leaning tower of millennium. Yeah. Yeah, That's crazy. That, and then, um, there was also a really good one recently about the, um, was I don't know if she was a controller or just an accountant. Oh yeah, the, the lady that embezzled money. over five million dollars from her firm. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always these little tidbits out there. You know, you want to think that everything goes as planned in architecture and engineering, yeah. and that's what the public sees. They'll see a nice, pretty building or a nice big road, but you know, the the normal people out there don't understand all the drama. Uh, that goes on behind the scenes and every once in a while it'll pop out and it'll become public like you know a 60-story office tower in san francisco that's leaning or (laughs) a woman that steals five million dollars from her uh, firm and fesses up once they catch her she didn't try and deny it Um, but you know we have uh, insurance brokers that write for us and we have uh, team coaches that write for us and they mention it all the time like a big issue in AE industry is uh, is handling conflict, is handling crisis, is handling uh, these issues that go sideways. Uh, you know, and you hear a lot about RPMs and you know principals in charge mm-hmm. and, and how much trouble they can get into yeah. when they don't see eye to eye with the owner of the project. Right. And so that's one of the things that we always get at in our, um, in the swag letter is what do you do? You know, what do you do when you have a rotten apple? Even you wrote an article the other day that hasn't been published yet, but you know, you take your time hiring and when it comes time to firing, if you know that there's a problem, you get rid of it as fast as you can. Exactly. And I think there's a lot of people out there, you know, when they're reading this wag letter, maybe they're a young CEO and they don't really get that yet, you know, and they know that, um, you know, that something is, you know, something's rotten in Denmark Yeah, and they might need someone like you or Mark or Chad or Paul Greenhagen, mm-hmm. uh, to say, you need to get rid of that problem as quick as possible. Exactly. Cause that's the only way you can get it done. And hopefully that young CEO out there who's reading this wag letter says, you know, Susie Q is not doing what we need her to do, yeah. and she's infecting the other employees. But, you know, just good bare bones uh, advice and tips and best practices is what uh, this WAC letter is really all about. We don't strive to be fancy, uh, but we do strive to be consistent and solid and uh, meaningful. Okay. So, so what do you have, uh, what's in, in store for, for the future of this wide letter with everything changing in, in the industry? And I mean, we all get our information differently. If I want information, I can go to Google and look it up or, you know, go here or there. How, how have you, uh, continued to remain relevant in an ever-changing digital age of information. Sure. Well, you know, we were recently added to Apple News, which is good. Every time we come out on Monday morning, our articles hit uh, Apple News. So add us to your news feed there, and you can get us on your uh, mobile device. So we're going to be where you are. 
Uh, another thing is, you know, we're, you know, nothing's easy in this industry and, and nothing's really easy in the world. <laughs> so, you know, continue to establish our uh, social media presence um, and, and continue to build um, the readership. Um, and I think once one of the ways that you build the readership is you dig deeper into the org chart, which means you start to engage younger readers. Yeah. And one of the things that I uh, look to do is to get younger uh, people that are in the industry um, to start writing for us. And, yeah. and it's occurring, but it's, a, it's also a slow process because... <laughs> Um, you know, and you know, all good and well, it's, you know, a lot of people say they want to write an article, but when it comes time to <laughs> writing it right, right. and getting like, it turned in, wait, did I actually have to do that? Yeah. Do I actually have to crank out a 600 word article by tomorrow? Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. Or I'm not going to be asking you to write for us that much more. Right. Um, so it's, it's easier said than done to get people to write for you because, a lot of times it's just not in people's uh, normal um, daily or weekly routine. And, and once they really start to write, they find out that it's not easy, especially if you want to make a, a point that people are going to listen to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that. And I, I would just bring it up. And um, what are your thoughts? And, and maybe maybe throw out a little tidbit of advice, especially as, since you are what I would term a and I'm using air quotes here, a professional writer, right? Um, you know, a lot of engineers and architects sometimes feel that they can't write their way out of a paper bag, even though these are highly intelligent individuals. What one or two pieces of advice would you give that young engineer or architect in terms of fine tuning the craft of writing? even within the scope of what they do on a regular basis? Sure. I, you know, one of the things that I, uh, it's real simple, you know, definitely write about what you know, uh, because especially in a technical field and a fact-based field, uh, this is not literary fiction. This is reality here. Um, it's definitely write about something that you know and um, keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes people want to be very extravagant. But what I've found in reading and writing uh, throughout the course of my professional career, and even in college, is um, the simpler, the better. And that's where you can really make your strong points as opposed to trying to be creative. Uh, a lot of times that's when people fall flat because they get lost. Right. They right. get turned around and they're in a big giant subdivision. They don't know where the exit is, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and, right. and they've kind of, they've kind of, yeah, they've kind of turned themselves around. So, you know, very linear, mm -hmm. um, and go from point A to point B and try and get there as quickly as you can. Right. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, there you go, folks. You, you hear it from the master himself on, on how to get your, how to take your writing up a notch or two. And, and certainly I know I personally have just, you know, I just learned by practicing and just writing over and just. Doing yeah, it. I mean, and, and it, it, it's also muscle memory, too. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. something that you have to do uh, is you just have to crank it out and you have to, you know, just to put it in your schedule. Yeah, is a, is a big part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So 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 tell me what it's it's like working directly with Mark Zweig. I mean, Mark is I mean, he isn't he is. I call him a business savant because he really is. He does know the ins and outs of running a successful business. He's taken two, two companies to uh, and put them on the Inc. 500, 5000 list. Uh, most recently with Mark Zweig Inc., which is his um, re real estate rehabilitation and, and um, development company. And then, of course, with most recently for us at Zweig Group back in 2013. And so um, and I was with us back originally when we did it t two years in a row. And so um, it's it's no small feat. Sure. And Mark is really, I mean, he's a he's a brilliant individual. I know he can be demanding, but yes. what, what's, it, what's it like working with him directly and also just, you know, kind of uh, um, um, bending yourself to his style of writing and exchanging ideas and information? Sure. Well, uh, I think a big thing with Mark Swag is, and I love Mark, by the way, too. I, I respect him quite a bit, and uh, he signs my check, and yep. he's given all of us a good uh, standard of living here. Absolutely. So let me say that first. Uh, but two, uh, Mark is definitely demanding. Uh, there's no doubt about it. 
And I think the big thing with Mark is you have to earn his trust. Yeah. And, um, and before you have his trust, it can be tricky. Yeah. After you've gained his trust, um, things get a lot better. Right. And so I think once Mark feels like that you're going in the right direction and I needed some guidance because I'd never done architecture and engineering before I got here, I had to learn it. Uh, but once he trusts you and feels like that, you know, you're doing the right thing. Um, he really just lets you go and, uh, and he trusts you to do what you're supposed to do. And that's, I think one of the magic moments that, uh, you get with that guy is that, um, you get a chance to do your thing. Yeah. And, but it, it does take a, a bit. And before you get to that moment, um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing, but I can tell you that process of earning Mark's trust and, and earning Chad Kleinhan's trust, the new right. CEO, um, it was a challenging task, but it, very rewarding. And in the process of getting to that point, um, I grew professionally, I also grew personally from the experience. So, because if you know Mark Swag, I mean, the results speak for themselves. I mean, he is super successful and he writes a column once a week for the Swag Letter, um, which getting back to what I was saying earlier, that's not the easiest thing to do. No. And, and when you read his stuff, um, you know, he's always spot on. And when I, I have the occasion to speak to people who or subscribers to this wag letter, they love his stuff because he'll just come out and blurt it out. Keeps it real. Yeah, he'll <laughs> say what a lot of people might be thinking, right? And don't have the <laughs> the courage to say. Mark will just come out and say it. Yeah. And yeah. so one of the things that makes this wag letter unique is his voice because I don't really think that voice exists in too many other places no. anywhere, but particularly in the AE industry. Yeah. So that's why he's on the masthead, and that's why he leads off is because there's only one Mark Swag. He has institutional knowledge, and it's like we say because we're, we're Gen Xers. You know, we're from that era, and we knew the old school peoples. You know, once they're gone, they don't get replaced. Right, I mean, right they're, exactly. They're, they're one of a kind, and they come from, a, from the old world, uh, from the old school, and uh, Mark is – in, embodies that yeah. and so i think that's really neat and that's one of the things that keeps me going is that we kind of have something that no one else has yeah okay well yeah absolutely and when you think about you know obviously this magazine i mean the newsletter rather has run since 1992 yes and so it's we're you know we're we're getting up there so and and you know we're still trying to remain relevant which i think i think is that's relative, I mean, to any company or any organization, especially those that are uh, creating printed material. And I look back and, and I remember being interviewed in Business Week in 2009, and Business Week's no longer around. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah, and, yeah. And just gives you perspective about how things change, even with the times and the way technology has changed and information and the flow of information. So it's, it's there's a lot to be said for that. And I know that you're trying to remain relevant in an ever-changing marketplace. And I know you guys have some plans in the future. Yeah, we have some plans, you know, to, to broaden the, the readership base. Uh, but I also think that one of the things that keeps us relevant is that we're not um, – you know, it goes back to the old uh, Caddyshack movie with Bill Murray, you know, where he's always chasing the groundhog and trying to, to catch it. And it gets him into so much trouble, you know. And, and I think one of the things that, that makes this wag letter strong, I think where we would develop is the actual delivery of it. Uh, but I think the content is, um, is strong. And, and I think that's what keeps us relevant is that we're not chasing groundhogs we're not chasing rabbits yeah. we're we know what works which is you know to have uh people that know what they're talking about to write for us and um and to get it professionally edited and and put together uh and to kind of you know it is a legacy publication to a certain extent yeah. um and i think that that's one of the things that makes this wag letter uh special is that it has been around for a long time and um but we're not trying to turn it into you know 
some kind of crazy, you know, BuzzFeed type of website, yeah. you know, where, you know, with all the clickbait and everything, that's right. not what the swag letter does. Yeah. And that's not what it is. Yeah. I think our big challenge is to, is to grow the readership and, and to modernize or to continue to modernize uh, some of the forms of the delivery. Mm-hmm. But I think our content, it's timeless and it's universal. And I think a lot of the things that are in this wag letter could apply to running a firm in toxicology or running a firm, a law firm or running an accounting firm. You know, I think a lot of the things that we talk about um, could be translated to uh, a greater realm of of businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, that that makes perfect sense. Um, so, so could could you tease any stories that you got that you're working on that might might be coming out in the near future in a, in a, in a new edition of the Zweig letter that that we should be looking out for? Yeah, well, you know, it's something. Um, uh, gosh, the the, the you put me on the spot right here, but uh, <laughs> one of our uh, hot firm best firm CEOs is is a guy by the name of David Aaron's, and okay. he has a firm up in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And we're doing we're going to run a conference call with him, which is where the CEO talks about, you know, it's a 15 question questionnaire, mm-hmm. just about the nuts and bolts of running um, an AE firm. And of course, he's very successful and he uh, he's the top guy there. But David Aaron's uh, I read and edited his uh, conference call the other day and um it's really good. I mean, he really opened up and, you know, every once in a while people talk in generalities. Right, right. Okay. You know, that happens. But he really gets into some more detailed stuff. And I was editing it uh, last Friday, actually. And I'm like, this is pretty good. Yeah. So uh, David Aaron's uh, conference call is going to be coming up uh here pretty soon in the next okay. few weeks and it's awesome. a pretty it's pretty tight it's it's really good and i don't think there's one typo in it yeah and um so he really he and his team really did a fantastic job uh we just ran a a, a column from paul greenhagen from uh westwood, westwood. professional yeah. services you know and he was talking about sometimes when you because they bought a lot of firms they've acquired a lot of firms in the last few years and that firm has really really grown and one of the things that he was talking about in the column was that, um, and it's out on Facebook right now and on our website, is, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you acquire a firm and the firm that you acquire might have some better ideas and better processes than yours. Right, right. Uh, you know, and, and that you have to confront that and say, you know what, we might have acquired them. But they're doing things a little bit better than us, at least in certain departments. Yeah. And that you have to to be open to that. And you can't just run roughshod over the firm that you've acquired. You have to see what they've got. And if they've got something that's better than what you have, you might have to implement it. And coming from a, a, a CEO of that stature, I think they're around a 500-man firm now. That means a lot. Yeah, And um, so that was a really good column. But we've always got some good stuff brewing. It's just, you know, people have to take the time and, and to, to read what the CEOs of these very successful firms are saying about how they do business. Yeah. And that's very powerful because there's only way one way you can get that knowledge is to have done it. Okay. This is not theoretical stuff. Yeah. Huh. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, um, just hearing you talk about Paul and, and I think humility is so key, especially in the the M and A space, and and we see that a lot. Of, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm just going to buy this company, and they'll just become us, and that'll be that." But yeah, the reality is, is that sometimes you, there are some there are some good ideas out there. And, yeah, and, and then you might acquire a firm with some super talented people, exactly, and exactly. you know you don't want to run them off. No, because no, if you if you try and run roughshod over them, they will put their resume out there somewhere else, and there are executive search people out there who will (laughs) scoop them. We know a few. (laughs) Yeah. We know a few who will scoop them up and say, Hey, if you don't like it over there anymore, there's a new place for you to go. We've got a better place for you to hang your hat. Yeah. And and Paul talks about all that. Yeah. And, and so I thought that was very illuminating, Uh, but he's a major CEO, but he always comes in on deadline and he always has good stuff. Okay. So, and those are the kind of people that we like to have in there. Okay. 
Good, good, good. Well, man, I, you know, I really appreciate you doing this. And I, I know you, you, you've got a busy schedule. Um, I did have a couple more questions I want to ask you. We are doing something new here on the um, on the Zweig letter. We want to go a little deeper for our audience. And since sure. this is an interview, uh, we want to learn who the real Richard Massey is. Oh, gosh. Now, and, and before we do that, I do want to I do want to give you a little pub. You did write a book recently called Municipal Tilt. Yes. Which I got a signed copy of. I really appreciate that. And I just started diving into it. But do you want to just give us a quick synopsis of what that's all about? Yeah, sure. Uh, You know, Municipal Tilt is a local election uh, set in 1995, uh, back before the Internet and cell phones and and all that stuff had really, you know, taken over uh, the discourse. And it's a local election. You know, it's the good guys versus the bad industry versus the environment. But that's really just a backdrop. And what the what the novel is really about? It's about redemption. Okay. It's about people okay. finding their voice in a in a confusing world. Yeah. Uh, and they do find their voice. And one of the central themes is is that if you want to find your voice in this world, at some point in time, you're going to have to fight back. Absolutely. And to to hold on to what you have or to get whatever it is that you want, because there's always going to be obstacles. Yeah. in front of you yeah. and that's with anything okay well no that's awesome I can't, I can't i can't i just literally cracked it open uh looked at the forward and i'm gonna start reading it uh over the next couple of weeks so i'm, I'm looking i'm excited to yeah looking, you're feedback, you're in so. for a treat just okay. stick with it okay yeah no i definitely will um cool. so my other question was and i'm not going to ask you what was the last book you well actually i will what you're you're an author what was the last book you read well, I'm a history guy. That's right. Okay. Uh, so I read a lot of history. And the last book that I can truly remember reading, I haven't read in the last few months, but gosh, I think I, uh, the last, oh, I read about six or seven books about a little corner uh, in the southeast of France in a little area called Gascony, which was preparation okay. for a book that right. I just finished. Right. Uh, but I read, um, it was the Bordeaux wine trade and a historian had gone in and found all the old tax records from the 14th century wow. and found out how much wine was actually coming through Bordeaux in the middle ages. And it was interesting because, uh, they found out, uh, and the, the author, she died young. She contracted cancer and passed, and it was really just a publication of her notes. Okay. But they were groundbreaking because no one had ever done it. And uh, it was an author by the name of Marjorie James. And what she had done is collected the tax records. And in 1305, <laughs> you know, which is 700 years ago, is um, over 700 years ago, the volume of the Bordeaux wine trade was about a third of what it is today. Wow. Which means it was huge. I think 105,000 tons went through the port at Bordeaux. Wow. And um, so I'm a history guy. And uh, when you read that history, but it illuminates everything <clears throat> else that you did. But I had to read about six or seven books and some scholarly articles uh to figure out what was going on in that part of the world because it's kind of remote and it's kind of uh, obscure, Mm -hmm. but it's also universal, Yeah, you know, because, you know, they started pulling out their, their grain crops and replanting them with, with uh, grapes Grapes. because why that's where the money was. Yeah. And obviously people still drink Bordeaux wine today. You can buy it at liquor world in Fayetteville. You You know, I mean, it's just a brand. It's it's a brand that has survived and thrived for uh, seven, eight hundred years. Yeah, that's amazing. That's cool. Where did you go on your last vacation? My last real vacation where I took time off, I went down to the hill country in southwest Texas to uh, visit my family Mm -hmm. uh, right outside a little town called Camp Wood. We're on the west fork of the Noasis River. Okay. All right. And um, you expect Pancho Villa and his gang of desperados to jump out <laughs> to jump out from around every corner that you go out from. It's a beautiful place. I think I'm going back down there again this summer. Okay. But you know, as you get older, you realize that your family is the most important thing in your life. That's so it. Um, I go down. I go down there to visit my family. My mom's there, and okay. you know, some cousins and all that stuff. So. Um, 
that would would really be the last place that I went. And okay. I write so much these days, I really don't leave town that often because it, you have to stop everything exactly. when you leave town. Yeah, how about that? So, all right, and then my last question for you is if you could binge watch one TV series, old or new, what would it be? Oh, my, that's a great question because I know binge watching is a big thing now, right? It is, it is. You know, um, I would be... You know, it, it sounds odd, but it's one of the TV shows that I grew up with watching with my mom mm-hmm. uh, that I missed dearly was Remington Steel. Oh, I thought you were going to say Bonanza, but you said yeah, Remington Steel. Remington okay. Steel. Right. Yeah, cool. you remember that one? Yeah, I do. I with do. Pierce Brosnan and, and the lady, and they were solving these crimes, and mm-hmm. they had like this back and forth uh, romance relationship. Right, exactly. Those yeah, were fun. I remember that. that was. I loved was. those. Yeah. And whenever I see. You know, Remington Steel just always brings me back to a uh, a happy time. But I know it's not Game of Thrones or yeah. anything like that. But um, I would go through and watch everything from Remington Steel and then move on to something else. That's funny. Yeah, no, I know there's my TV or some me TV or whatever that has all those old shows. So that's it's kind of cool to see those. So. Yeah, they, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, Richard, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us on actually your podcast. This yeah. Wide Letter Podcast. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, thanks. And uh, we hope that uh, anyone out there, if you want to subscribe, uh, give us a call, get on our our website, and you can figure out how to get our, our newsletter. And otherwise, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we actually have a gift for everybody listening today. And, and uh, as a reminder, all Zwei Group media programs like this one are available and normally on podcast format, but also video. Uh, they're free for download on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube, just to name a few places. Um, we'd like to thank you specifically for listening to this podcast by offering you a free copy. Yes, you've heard me say it. A free copy of the Zweig Letter and a free subscription to Civil Plus Structural Engineer Magazine. Now, how often do you listen to a podcast and get a free free newsletter and a free subscription to a magazine. Uh, Not often, folks. So I really want to encourage you, just visit freetzl.zweiggroup.com. A link to all of this information, including contact information for Richard, will be in our show notes. Uh, And we'd love it if you'd go to iTunes or wherever you tune into this show and give us a five-star rating and share this link with a friend. I'm Randy Wilburn, and you've been listening to Zwei Group Media, part of Zwei Group. Remember, we exist to make you more successful. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this special edition Zwei Letter podcast. We hope that you can apply Mark's no-holds-barred advice to your daily professional life. For a free six-week subscription of the Zwei Letter, please visit freetzl.zweiggroup.com to gain more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about leadership, finance, HR, and marketing your firm. Subscribe today. Subscribe today.